Okay, we're back on this YZ250 build, and one of the big projects we have left is the, the brakes. So these brakes, they see how awesome they look? They're really not that awesome yet because they've just been vapor blasted. So they look good on the surface, but still are the old pads, old innards, all that. And old lines that are all beat up. These are 20 year old, these are 2001 YZ250 brake lines. So we already got this Cerakoted. How cool does that look? You like that, Donnie? I like it. So we already got that Cerakoted, it looks really cool. So right now, um, first thing I'm going to do is we're going to, I got my tool. Well, we already got the brake, the fluid off of this one, right? So, uh, and it's already out of the rear. For some reason, I thought I hadn't got the fluid out yet. So fluid's out. So first thing I'm going to do then now is get rid of these lines. So I'm going to break loose the lines and have these four things on my bench so I can rebuild them. I have the all balls kits to rebuild each one. Going to clean them out, get them all back going right now. It's nice having a good vise in your shop uh, with soft jaws. You see these jaws are removable. These are held on by a magnet, so it's kind of nice. And then just gives you a good place to work from. When you're doing this kind of stuff, you can you know grab your T-handle or socket, whatever you're working with, and then hold it in a vise like this makes, makes good work where you're not going to damage anything or break anything is a good way to do things, you know. These lines, being 20 years old, are obviously junk. Time to throw them away and get some good new Galfer lines set up on this thing. We started here with the uh, front master and see those circlip pliers. It's gonna be really difficult to see inside of here while you're working, but those circlip pliers can help you know, get that first clip out. And as you get that out, then everything else will just come right out. Contact cleaner and blow it out. That's really as simple as it is cleaning these things. You wanna pull every piece out clean it off and now as we're getting ready for reassembly here if that bore where the plunger was is dirty you can put a little scotch bright in there like with a pick or something but you want to be careful not to scratch the side of the bore so here i'm working on getting the seal in now with all of our uh, all balls rebuild kits here that you'll see we have new pieces for everything and so the main things that seal in a you have a kind of a, a plunger, let's say, with these spiral grooves in here. And they have little seals. These seals are directional. Uh, we ha have had guys who have assembled these backwards and it obviously won't work at all. Um, it'll work a little bit, but not correctly at all. And so if you have a problem with that, so what I tell guys is take a picture before you take the stock seals off so you keep track of the direction. So we've got our seals back on. You have to kind of fight with a pick to get those on. You can see we have brake fluid here. We'd like to put brake fluid over all the surfaces. So that's the only thing that's in there after it's perfectly clean. And that'll allow the seals to have a good contact patch as they go in. So again, keep track of how you put the spring in to start with. Now I have the plunger in here. Now we've got our circlip pliers. You can see I got that on there. Sometimes I'll even, if I have somebody next to me, they'll help me a little bit in helping to get this this in but i'll have a, a thumb here and maybe a pick or a screwdriver in the other hand but as long as you can get it in a, a little bit started then you can sometimes push on it with something else to get it to fall into the groove and with these style of of clips you just have to get them close to their home and once you have them close you can kind of push and and pop them into place and at that point, we're, we're pretty much done here. So I just have held the cap on here as just kind of a, hey, let's just save this. Obviously, we're not finishing these things. So I got it to a good stopping point there at the top. We have the rubber piece that comes in the kit. We have a new one of those. And you want to be careful. You can really easily poke a hole in these. This just keeps dust and debris away from the inside. It doesn't do any sealing. And... It's good to have it kind of all together at, like at this point. And then now we can get it on, you know, fully seated. And then also I like to keep a lever on there, uh, the lever that I'd be using so that it's all um, kind of at the finished uh, point. 
most of this stuff uh, isn't very tight. You can just get it just, just like this by hand. Um, front brakes, they have a nut on the back side to keep them in place. So on the rear here, now we're at the rear master. Again, we have the same type of pliers. Um, and these are just uh, basic snap uh, ring pliers. D these are directional. These ones are snap on, but they don't have to be the, you know, anything fancy in here. There's a little O-ring inside of here. You pull, you get a new one in the kit. I'm gonna get the clevis off here, the brake clevis so that it's out of the way while we're working. I probably could have done this, you know, much sooner than when it was on the bench when we disassembled the bike. So we're gonna back that clevis all the way off and so we can deal with just the plunger um, together when we pull it out of the uh, rear master here. At this point, we're gonna get that old rubber piece off. Now it's time for our snap ring pliers again and you can kind of push over the main piston uh, you know shaft here for the brake and and again this is one of those things that's tough to do with just two hands but it can be done as you see here me fumble around a little bit but once you get it on there you can get in there to to the clip and be able to pull that clip out and that clip is all that's holding the whole assembly in and then when you as you pull it out the entire assembly will come out just like you see there and then all the old yucky fluid now we're going to pull out the main part of the piston in here now this is the part where you want to maybe take a picture it helps you to take a picture of that if you've never had one apart to see the direction that those seals are pointing and also that you know which way the spring's pointing just to help you out um, when you go to reassemble um, for those that aren't familiar gosh i kind of make a mess at times huh so here i have a little um, drain bucket set up here in my sink for all the contact and brake fluid mess to all go into this bucket. So now you can see I got a little bit of Scotch Brite on a, um, and I got a little dowel kind of cleaning in inside of this bore here. Like again, you don't want to scratch that bore. So you want to just clean in there a little bit. And you can kind of look in there with a flashlight and see how clean it looks, but that Scotch Brite will work really well with a little bit of contact cleaner on there to clean that out. And then again, now we're going to clean it out again with contact cleaner, and the inside of that bore will be really good. Now with our uh, plunger here, piston, whatever you want to call this piece, uh, you want to get those seals off of there. Again, it's good. Pay attention to what direction that they are on and orientated at, so you put them on the right way. Now these things are really strong and heavy duty. When you, you stretch these things to pull them over their spots, you're going to think it won't stretch that far, but they do go that far. Again, brake fluid inside the bore and on the seals. And now we can push it back in into place here. So now we're going to put our pieces back on and we'll get our snap new snap ring that comes in the All Balls kit with our snack bring pliers and we can go right over and push it in. And again, this is something, if you get it close, you can kind of push it on and then you'll feel it snap into place. Always make sure that it turns in the groove and is fully seated. Now we're gonna get our seal in here, the, this, this rubber a seal that is mainly as a, like a dust cover to make sure you're not getting any debris in there. You wanna push on it, make sure that everything feels like it works correctly and you should be in good shape there. Now, I just like to save my bolt. I do like the stock banjo bolts a lot if I can. Now, this one has a reservoir, external reservoir. Many brakes don't anymore. These still do. So you have an O-ring, brand new O-ring in the kit. I'm gonna put, I put that in there with our reservoir hose and then again, another snap ring, uh, which this one's not quite as difficult to get to as the other one. So you can get that one uh, in there and in the groove and again make sure that it turns in the groove once you get it fully seated. Doing brakes like this is important on these older bikes. Um, most newer bikes aren't going to need this done. So now I have our new uh, brake spring set up. Uh, Fast Company makes this cool cool piece and I have a clevis on here. Honestly on this bike we ended up getting a new clevis since I shot this video. Uh, from Fast Company that looks really cool. That's the nice, uh, you know, aluminum billet style, and it's not this uh, old kind of 
cast stock one. So I have a Fast Company one on there as well now that looks really cool. Um, I went ahead and run the cotter pin through um, and, and keeping the brake lever. And you see this brake lever was vapor blasted. So now we're going to work on the lower calipers. Uh, these, this is the rear one, these uh, usually don't go bad very often. So these are usually, it's usually, if you have a brake problem, it's usually in the master at top. The main reason I'm cleaning this one out and these out because we did vapor blast them. So we want to make sure that all this is clean. And since they are fully apart and off the bike, it was a good idea to rebuild these. It's a little trick shooting these pistons out. They can be tough. You don't want to use any tools. So you shoot air in there. You see this right here? And it'll, and I have a rubber tip on my compressor and it shoots the piston right out. The rear one's a lot easier. And I see how I had two pads in there. What I'll usually do is then take one of the pads out and then leave it in there and then go do it again, shoot it again. And this thing really will shoot with, if you have a lot of pressure, it, this thing could shoot across the room, you know? So you wanna be careful that you don't shoot it against your finger or anything. And now it's almost all the way out and I can pop it out the rest of the way just with another shot of air and it comes right out. You wanna inspect these a little bit. Usually they're fine with just a little bit of Scotch-Brite and, and cleaner on them, they're fine. Now we have our uh, caliper here, and we're put, getting ready to reassemble it. I put grease on in the rubber rubbers pieces and on the uh, the guide piece for the brake. So here's the actual seals, which would be kind of again. We're going to clean that bore out of the, the caliper here where the piston rides. We're going to clean that out really well with some Scotch Brite. Um, this one's large enough you can just use your finger so you don't have to be using any type of tool that you could risk scratching it with so we just contact clean that off and then we're gonna do the same thing to the piston here a little scotch bright on here again not very much we don't want to do a lot of damage and we just double check that this bore is good clean them both off uh really well and now after we've cleaned them all off we can get the seals back in there and they go in pretty easy and it's pretty obvious which one goes to the front and back. One's usually a tiny bit thicker than the other one. So once we get those both in place, they, they pop in pretty easy. And then once they're in place, then we can add a little bit of brake fluid, a little bit of brake fluid on both surfaces again. Um, just gonna really help you assemble this thing and see if we get the piston down straight, see how we can easily just tap it right down and I would put it in about that far right there. You don't want to go past, you know, flush or anything to make it more difficult when you have to go bleed it. Now it's all cleaned up and kind of ready to go, you know, reassembling this thing with our new pads. And you can see how the old pads look, you know, fairly decent here, but because they were all vapor blasted. But we like to run these insulators. We think that's really important on your brakes to last longer. So I like to pull the stock insulators off and put them on our new pads. These are Galfer pads. Um, and we've had pretty good luck with those, kind of the stock style Galfer pads. Don't forget your backing plate, you know, like in this case it fell off and I'm bending the tiny little tabs a little bit just to make it grip a little bit better in the carrier here, the, the caliper carrier. Um, this thing will want to fall out on you. I've seen, I have seen some guys glue them into place. So that's something you can look at doing also. And then I already have the spring plate in place and you can, a lot of times you can look at how it sat in there before, if you have any questions or looking in, uh, at another bike or on the microfish. So we have our pads going in. And I also like to, you know, the bolt that goes through there, I like to clean that up a little scotch bright and put grease on it as well when I put it in. This is a new one that came in the All Balls kit to get in. And then this last cap that's just a screwdriver, for sure put grease on that. Because those things can be, can gall up and be tough to get out. So we have our simple little rubber cover for the, the, the bleeder tool. That's what it is, the bleeder right there. We'll throw that little rubber piece on the bleeder. Um, so we're kind of ready to, you know, these things could be, you know, getting ready to, you know, get back on the bike. Now the front one, again, similar thing. Now if this thing is too tight, you can add heat to it or get it over in the vise. Luckily, this one wasn't very tight, so I was able to pop it off. When you assemble those, always, I like to put grease on those. Not on this piece right here that I'm undoing right now. Um, 
I don't like to run Loctite on that piece, though. The, uh, just just no grease, but Loctite. And I do put grease on the part that goes through the brake pads a little bit just so that it doesn't corrode as bad. But not on the actual threads so much. So go here, and then we're going to disassemble this one the same as we did the rear. It's a little more tricky keeping both pistons to, to come out at the same time. So I had one brake pad in there. Now with this thing, I go back and forth trying to knock each piston out. So as one comes out, I'm going to put one back in and kind of hold it. Again, I wouldn't hold it with your finger. So you can put something in there to hold it to allow you to shoot the other one out. And then you can kind of get them both to a spot where they can both kind of pop out a lot easier. Um, sometimes you can find something a little thinner, like a, like a screwdriver or, or something like, like I'm doing here. And it's a bit of a tricky process, but once you get them kind of popped out to a certain point, you can grab them. You don't want to grab these with pliers. We've seen that over the years and it will for sure damage them. And then they will leak and you'll have a problem with your brakes. You don't want to make things worse. These have a coating on them um, and you don't want to damage that at all. Now you can pull those seals out inside. Very easy. This would kind of be like the ring, you know, the rings on a piston, but they stay in this bore here. You just pull those, those two seals out of each one. And again, these holes are pretty big, so um, you can clean up pretty easily. Usually you don't have much corrosion going on in here, but uh, just a little bit of Scotch-Brite around the pistons will clean those up really well. And of course, I use contact cleaner and everything to make sure that they're getting cleaned off really well. Um, so those are both cleaned off and ready for reinstall. And we can clean up inside our caliper with some Scotch-Brite. On our old pads here, these things were just toast. They looked okay, but the main problem was they were soaked in with oil from leaky fork seals, those types of things. That's very common with brake pads is that they can just get very saturated with fork fluid. Okay, so reinstalling. Again, these uh, seals are actually really easy to install, and it's pretty obvious which one goes in first. I like to put the one that goes back furthest in first. It's, it's kind of the easiest. It's, you can just use your fingers to do it. And I don't put brake fluid on these yet until I get them in. I just don't want them all, you know, slipping around on my fingers. Once you get them both in place, then you can put a little bit of brake fluid on the pistons and in the bores. And just, you're just going to rub it in with your fingers on both surfaces pretty well. Get a brake fluid. We don't use anything, um, you know, big name brand. You can get any type of good high temp, high temperature brake fluid from the uh, auto auto parts store these pistons will push back in if they don't push right in then you have a problem and you want to shoot them out again and and see what's going on it is possible to put these things upside down and you want to be careful of that now we have a new brake carrier here this is for an oversized front rotor that we're going to have on this yz250 build so we're gonna it's, it's a good idea to pay attention to how the other carrier set up so you can put again put a little grease inside the rubber uh, guide piece and on both on this guide piece here so on both sides it's completely guided and then the the galfer carrier is going to require that you run the pieces from the stock carrier in this case the guide piece there's there is a rubber piece that we that in this video you can see right there that i forgot to get put in till the end here you want to get that in put a little grease inside of it wipe away all the excess because you don't want this grease being too much where it gets on the pads you can see we repl just replaced the guide piece onto the ca onto this caliper carrier here and with that it'll all go together nice and smooth and we have this little backing plate that's now on the ca the caliper carrier if it's not snug, you can bend it like we showed in the, the other video uh, earlier. You can bend it back so it stays nice and snug. And we have our new uh, Galfer brake pads, OEM style. And these do not have those backing plates like we showed you on the rear. So not as critical of a deal. The, we like to put a little grease onto the shaft of the, the bolt here. It comes with some a little bit of thread locker on the uh, actual threads you can leave that on uh, it's fine it's not too heavy duty and that I think it holds it well so now with our spring clip in place you want to pay make pay attention to make sure that that piece that little spring plate gets put into the, the
the same direction that it was. So when you pull these apart, it's always a good idea to pay attention to how, how they're in there. You can see this one. You can turn it, and I think this one was in the wrong way. So you want to make sure you pay attention to how it is. And you can see that the bolt guide, retaining bolt here, it actually touches against that plate and helps hold it in place. Okay, so again, I, I don't get any of this stuff really tight. I'm just working on the bench here. So I'll just do it, you know, kind of wrist tight on these, these bolts uh, like this. And it's a little tighter because it has thread locker on there as far as you know, screwing it down. And then we'll have a cap. Again, I mentioned on these caps that are the, with the, just the flat blade screwdriver cap, you wanna make sure you put some grease on those. So it's important to have a little grease on there and then tighten that on right on down. So as you can see in this photo, now we've got the lines hooked up on the bike. We just have the photos here for you, but we have the lines hooked up, not bled yet. And um, I have the lines on here and I also have the fork guard we had to, to make the shorter line work, the old Yamaha lines went under the fork. So Ride Engineering makes this special bracket that they ran back in that time frame uh, of the early 2000s when Honda kind of had, still had a patent, I think, on the routing of that front brake line. So you can see that there's a nice um, way to hold this on to the fork guard. It's a little bit of a hassle but long term this is a, a good fix and you don't have to have the line go underneath it's where it's more vulnerable and also it's easier to bleed kind of a better setup with this this setup on here so we have both the lines on we're ready to bleed this thing i've even rigged up some rotors in here because i don't have the wheels quite ready so i've rigged up some rotors in place where i can kind of get these things uh 95 percent bled sitting right here before the wheels are on and get these things all roughed out Okay, so that's a wrap on doing brakes. Hopefully you learned something. Uh, the main thing is just taking your time. Uh, it's pretty simple. The hardest part's bleeding them. And so make sure, like I, t like I mentioned on those pistons, uh, with the, the seals are going the correct way uh, on your uh, masters. And on your calipers, it's not that hard, it, you know, like I said. So it's pretty simple, cut and dry. We have our lines here. We're gonna double check on our front line. It's a newer style front line that doesn't go, so it's shorter. I have to make sure that I can find a fork guard that's gonna clamp on right. So that's my next step. Um, so hopefully that helps you out some, right? So hopefully you enjoyed it. Help you out on our YZ250 uh, brake rebuilds.